Happy 2021, everyone, and welcome to this year's January Leak Code Challenge. Uh, I really hope that this year is going to be a good one for you all. So let's get started. This question is called Check Array Formation Through Concatenation. You are given an array of distinct integers, R, and an array of integer arrays, pieces, where the integers and pieces are distinct. Now, your goal is to form the original array R by concatenating the arrays and pieces in any order. However, you are not allowed to reorder the integers in each array pieces. So we have like a list of lists inside here. We can see like 7, D8, 4, 64, 91, but we're not allowed to rearrange these. But there's two key components here. We know that all the integers in R are unique, and also all the integers in pieces are unique. So that got me thinking, all right, well, does that mean that the subarrays are unique? Or does it mean that all the integers inside of the list of lists are going to be unique? And that's going to make a big difference, right? Luckily, we see here that the integers in pieces are distinct. So if we flatten everything inside of this array, it's going to be all distinct. So that's big. That means that this is going to be actually a lot easier than expected. We might first think, OK, we're going to have to do some sort of path recursion, um, you know, go back and do some backtracking, stuff like that. But it doesn't look like we're going to have to do that. And the reason for that is because all these integers are unique, there's only one possible combination. So if we look for 91 here and say, all right, is 91 in here? And we add that to some sort of temporary array. Uh, with the next one, 4, we can just check to see, hey, does 4 exist inside of our list pieces? And if it does, then we append the 4, 64, put that in there. And we can check next um, to see if 64 is in here. But it is, but it's not going to be the first number inside of these arrays, right? So we already know 64 is inside here. So then we can just skip that and move on to 78, add that. And at the very end, if this is equal to whatever list we built up is the same as array, then we know that they're the same, right? So And that's really all there's to it. The real important thing here is to create some sort of uh, lookup dictionary to see if the first number inside of our list of lists is, um, and just write the index number for that number, and then just append it, or I should say extend it to our temporary array and try to create the one that we have here. All right, so the most important thing is to create this lookup dictionary. And we can do that by creating, um, doing a list comprehension, or I should say like a dictionary comprehension. So what that would look like is we would take our, uh, let's see, whatever is inside of the first item in the list of lists and make the index number the value. So we'll say four. I should say hmm, I um, I P in enumerate pieces. So for IP in enumerate pieces, we have their index number. That's going to be the value as well as our list. And just the first value there is going to be the key. Okay, so now we have our lookup dictionary and we need to have some sort of temporary array, right? We'll create the empty array here. And we'll say for A in array, we'll check to see if this number is inside of our lookup. So if A is, um, what is it? if A in lookup, that means we want to extend our temporary array with the sublist inside there. So to get that, we would say uh, get pieces and get the uh, look up and put in the A. If we don't see it, then we can just skip it because we assume that if it uh, was in between the list, then it should be inside there. So at the very end, all we have to do is say, uh, does this temporary way equal the original array? And we can just return that because if it does, then that's a true. Otherwise, we'll just return a false because it didn't. So this works because there's only one combination that's ever going to work. Um, and it's looks like a naive approach, but this will always work because um, because all the integers are distinct. So let's make sure that works. It does look like it's working. Submit that. And there we go, accepted. So uh, there's slight variations here. You could have while loops instead. Um, you could save a slight amount of time by um, breaking the loop, by checking each individual number, like each time you extend it. But this is, uh, you know, this works and seems to be just as efficient. So I think we'll end it there. All right. So thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.